Much is said about the bloodthirsty and violent crimes of the Nazi SS. However, much less known are the atrocities committed by the Soviet paramilitary forces known as the NKVD. Some of their actions are so terrible that they have stained the pages of history with blood. And to this day, most of these crimes against humanity remain unpunished or denied by Russian history. In today's video, we will try to contextualize these macabre acts, explain the profile and origin of the NKVD, and delve into some particular events that have been seared into the collective memory of the peoples of Eastern Europe who suffered them. Get ready for a chilling journey back in time to the Soviet tundra in this new installment of military history. In the darkest and most turbulent part of the history of the Soviet Union, the NKVD, the Russian acronym for the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs, emerges as an ominous figure whose actions left a profound scar on the collective memory of its nation. For decades, this organization became the embodiment of fear, repression, and unrestrained cruelty for the Stalinist state. Essentially, it served the same functions as the paramilitary organizations of Nazi Germany. The NKVD originated in 1919, amidst revolutionary chaos, under the name Cheka, the feared secret police of Soviet Russia. As the Bolshevik Revolution solidified its power, the Cheka evolved and, in 1934, officially transformed into the NKVD, an entity that encompassed a wide range of responsibilities, from internal security to border control. This group became an omnipresent force that intruded into all aspects of Soviet life. Its functions ranged from repressing political dissent to managing forced labor camps known as gulags for all those who dared to challenge the established order. They had the authority to arrest, interrogate, and execute citizens suspected of treason, conspiracy, or simply being enemies of the state. Under the leadership of figures like Lavrenti Beria, the NKVD orchestrated a series of political purges where thousands of people were eliminated for alleged conspiracies against the regime. The Great Purge, between 1936 and 1938, was a period of brutal repression that affected all strata of Soviet society, from high officials to peasants and artists. This wave of terror left an indelible mark and led to the execution or imprisonment of millions of citizens. The paramilitary force also played a crucial role in espionage and secret missions. During World War II, it carried out covert operations both inside and outside the country, ensuring internal loyalty and eliminating supposed traitors. Its influence extended beyond Soviet borders, and the NKVD was a key figure in the Cold War and in shaping the Eastern Bloc once the war was over. The NKVD also oversaw mass deportations of various ethnic groups such as the Crimean Tatars, and managed forced labor camps where millions of political prisoners and dissidents languished in inhumane conditions. The repressive infrastructure of this apparatus was intrinsically linked to the planned economy of the Soviet Union. This means that the USSR knew it needed these shock forces to maintain order in the country. Therefore, the authorities attempted to cover up and minimize some of their most gruesome war crimes some of which we will share with you below. In the confusing and confrontational scenario of World War II, the Katyn Massacre appears as a dark shadow that occurred between April and May of 1940. However, it all began much earlier, on September 1, 1939, when the relentless forces of Nazi Germany invaded Poland, marking the beginning of a conflict that would change the world's history forever. While the Polish army tenaciously resisted the German offensive from the West, a bleak morning of September 17th saw the arrival of Soviet troops that invaded Poland without prior warning or declaration of war. This act, a blatant violation of previous treaties, such as the 1921 Peace Treaty and the 1932 Non-Aggression Pact, left Poland trapped without escape between two enemy fronts, Soviet official narrative attempted to justify the invasion by claiming the need to protect the inhabitants of Western Ukraine, who at that time were part of Poland. However, the true story was revealed with the signing of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact 
in August 1939, which was a secret agreement between the Soviet Union and Germany to divide Polish territories between them once the invasions were over. Despite the efforts of the Polish army to resist, the offensives were overwhelming. By the end of September 1939, the USSR and Germany had occupied and divided Polish territories, plunging the population into the nightmare of occupational terror. Brutality knew no bounds, extending even to women and children. Between a quarter and half a million Polish citizens were arrested, facing an uncertain fate. Some were released, others were transferred to Germany or sent to Siberia and Kazakhstan. But most, especially Polish officers, were distributed in prisoner camps throughout Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. In a macabre discovery in 1941, Germany, at that time an ally of the USSR, found a mass burial of Poles shot in the spring of 1940 in the Katyn Forest. Hands tied behind their backs and bags over their heads revealed the cruelty of the acts perpetrated, proving that it was not a confrontation. Soviet denial in the years that followed attempted to blame the Nazis for the massacre, but the evidence was overwhelming. In 1990, Soviet archives finally revealed the USSR's involvement in the executions in Poland. Over 20,000 Polish prisoners of war were executed in mass shootings in places like Katyn, Tver, Kharkiv, and camps in Ukraine and Belarus, a tragic truth that was hidden for decades. This led to the existence of various audiovisual works, among which the Polish film Katyn from 2007, directed by director Andrzej Wajda, stands out which graphically portrays the executions suffered by the victims of the NKVD. Although an investigation in the 1990s declared the Katyn massacre a crime of the Stalinist regime, Russian authorities closed the case and shut down the investigation. The families of the victims, dissatisfied, brought their quest for justice to the European Court of Human Rights in 2012, which recognized the massacre as a war crime and criticized the lack of effective investigation by Russian authorities. However, Russia's refusal to delve into the investigation left unanswered questions and left the 21,857 people shot between April and May 1940 as forgotten victims of a dark past. No one knows for sure if there are still more undiscovered graves, but what is known are other atrocities committed by Soviet paramilitary forces in those years. In the western confines of Ukraine, between June and July 1941, Another tragedy as brutal as it was silenced unfolded. A series of massive prisoner killings. The backdrop of this horrendous narrative dates back to the fall of 1939, when the USSR liberated the Western Ukrainian territories that once belonged to Poland. Soviet propaganda portrayed this action as a liberation and reunification, although it soon became evident that this action brought a toll of ruthless terror. Initially, some Ukrainians welcomed Soviet troops, but reality soon revealed itself brutally. Soviet authorities resorted to the same modus operandi as in other occupied Ukrainian regions. Massive terrorism. Politicians, religious figures, intellectuals, and peasants were imprisoned and executed on charges of counter-revolutionary activities, sowing fear and despair among the locals. Heart-wrenching testimonies about the Lutsk prison evidenced the atrocity lived. Overcrowded cells, inhumane conditions, and the desperate struggle for survival. The prison population exceeded 73,000 people, a significantly higher number than the established limit. With the imminent German attack on the USSR, the leadership of the NKVD found itself in a deadly dilemma. The evacuation of prisoners was the first option. The Nazis on the front were approaching rapidly, a telegram from Moscow, allegedly from Lavrenti Berea, the leader of the NKVD, ordered a more drastic measure, the shooting of all prisoners. Thus began the so-called death marches that saw prisoners walking to their doom, shot by escorts and bombed by German planes. 
The tragedy intensified with burns from overcrowded wagons of people and the throwing of prisoner cars into the Dniester River from a destroyed bridge. Ivan Kindrat, a witness to the Soviet troops' retreat from Lviv, described an infernal scene at the Lunskoho prison. Corpses piled up to the ceiling, strangled women, and babies with broken skulls. Accounts of atrocities, including cut fingers and torn skin, left witnesses speechless. Although the Germans opened the doors of the prisons when they occupied the city, exhuming the bodies for propaganda purposes, the Soviet machinery tried to shift the blame to the Nazis without success. Between 22,000 and 24,000 people were murdered in this operation, victims of a brutality that defies human understanding. Despite this brutality, scheduled executions were not the only war crimes carried out by the NKVD. In the Spring Awakening of 1944, Soviet troops managed to expel the Germans from Crimea. Instead of rebuilding the peninsula, the Soviet government chose to unleash massive reprisals, marking the beginning of a tragedy known as the forced deportation of the Crimean Tatars. Soviet propaganda accused the entire Tatar people of treason and total collaboration during the Nazi occupation, narratively branding some 20,000 Donan Tatars as traitors. However, reality challenged this version, as more than 25,000 locals fought in the ranks of the Soviet army, some even being honored as heroes of the Soviet Union. Nevertheless, on May 11, 1944, Stalin signed a resolution to begin the conflict. The operation, orchestrated by the NKVD, began on May 18th, leaving the population stunned and fearful. The deportation was relentless. Children, women, the elderly, and disabled people were forced to leave everything behind without even packing. Most families were cruelly stripped of their identity and belongings. Transported by trucks to train stations, the Crimean Tatars were sent in overcrowded livestock freight cars to distant areas of Central Asia, the Urals, and Siberia. The operation culminated on May 20th, leaving in its wake the deaths of approximately 8,000 people, mainly elderly and children, who could not endure the inhumane conditions of the journey. So, let us listen to the heart-wrenching testimony of one of the deportees, who at that time was just a child. Durante la noche, la madrugada, estábamos durmiendo. Los soldados nos despertaron y nos llevaron afuera. La gente gritaba, estaba confundida, corría alrededor. Nadie sabía para dónde nos llevaban ni qué podíamos llevar con nosotros. Mis abuelos tomaron una bolsa con legumbres. Fue toda la provisión de comida con la que contamos. En los special settlements, life was a challenge. Shelters and barracks with shortages of water and food. The death toll between 20 and 40 percent of the deportees reflected the suffering of a punished people. The Kremlin, in its attempt to erase the existence of this population, rewrote history, banned the language and removed nationality from all official documents. It is estimated that 200,000 people were victims of this forced deportation, but some historians dare to speculate that the number was double. Through prohibition on returning to Crimea for the Tatars persisted, until 1989, although Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania, and Canada recognized the deportation as genocide, the Russian Federation, successor to the USSR, avoided investigations and compensation. This war crime to this day remains unpunished. Similarly, other massacres committed by members of the NKVD remain untried. In October 1944, Europe was engulfed in World War II and the small village of Nemersdorf became a silent witness to one of the most heartbreaking tragedies in history. This village, a peaceful corner in East Prussia, was engulfed in chaos as Soviet forces advanced towards the Western Front. In a fateful event, Soviet troops took control of the village. What followed was a scene of horror etched into the collective memory of the locals. Innocent civilians, defenseless against the Soviet occupying forces, found themselves at the epicenter of a brutal massacre. The narrative turns somber when describing the ruthless fate suffered by women, the elderly, and children, who became helpless victims of the unleashed fury of the invaders. This dark chapter not only left scars on the physical landscape of Nemersdorf,
but also left indelible marks on the consciousness of the few who survived to tell the tale. They are no longer among us, but they have told the story to remember the horror that occurred. Similarly, another massacre committed by the NKVD attempts not to be forgotten. In the icy nights of February 10th and 11th, 1943, the city of Grishino, in eastern Ukraine, was engulfed in a nightmare that would endure in the darkest pages of history. In that ruthless winter, the 4th Guard's tank corps of the Soviet Guard descended upon the city, leaving behind a trail of horror and death. As the invading troops took control of the territory, 596 prisoners of war, nurses, construction workers, and female communication personnel were mercilessly killed. The once tranquil city became the scene of unimaginable atrocities. The evidence was found by Nazi forces on February 18, 1943, when the 5th SS Panzer Division Wicking, supported by the 333rd Infantry Division and the 7th Panzer Division, reconquered the city. What they found went beyond human comprehension. Mutilated corpses lay scattered in the streets, silent witnesses to boundless barbarity. The disregard for human life reflected in those images is hardly forgotten by those who encountered the disaster. Among the victims were 406 soldiers of the Wehrmacht, 58 members of the Todd organization, 89 Italian soldiers, 9 Romanian soldiers, 4 Hungarian soldiers, 15 German civilian officials, 7 German civilian workers, and 8 Ukrainian volunteers. The horror reached unimaginable levels, as these people were not only murdered, disfigured bodies, inhuman mutilations, and a trail of suffering that shook the soul lay among the corpses in the village. In later interviews, a German military judge would recall the vision of atrocities describing a macabre spectacle of violence that defied all ethics and humanity. The massacre of Grishino, hidden among the twists and turns of history, cries out for truth and justice. In its tales of horror and loss, it becomes a chilling testament to the fragility of humanity when war unleashes its demons. In the cold winter of 1943, Grishino plunged into shadows, but its memory persists even though this atrocious war crime is another atrocity that the Russian Federation insists on denying. The legacy of the NKVD is dark and macabre. The purges, forced labor camps, and repressive tactics left Soviet society traumatized. If that is the memory their compatriots hold, it is needless to clarify that the stories we have shared of this paramilitary force generate the most horrendous nightmares in those who suffered its excessive violence and ruthless wickedness. Although the NKVD was renamed in 1946 as the Ministry of State Security, MGB, and later as the KGB, its essence persisted over the years, influencing politics and the perception of state security with morally questionable tools. In conclusion, the NKVD was a ubiquitous and terrifying entity that shaped the history of the Soviet Union with an iron fist. Its shadowy legacy remains a vivid reminder of the extremes to which a state can go in the name of security and stability, leaving a trail of human suffering and fear in its wake, not only within its borders, but primarily in the territories it sought to depatriate. In this way, we are reaching the end of today's tragic and mobilizing video. We thank you for staying until the end, and we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming installments of Military History.